Ya te cansa de ser el culo, chicas. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, let me start the video by saying thank you so much for being here with us. And if it's not too much of a hassle, please share this video on your social media so that more people will know about it. Demonic Infestation I'm not the least surprised if we find a statistic showing more people facing demonic attacks at home because people are dabbling with the occult, just like what so many exorcists often warned us about. <laughs> Anyway, I came across a short video the other day of someone's house being haunted by the demonic. The homeowner in this video looks like he's been experiencing demonic infestation activity at home from a door opening on its own. There's nothing on this door. Hello? To the sound of someone or something in his basement. The person recording all these events is sure that there's something in his house. And then one night, he captures this one. More noises. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And usually after watching this kind of video, I read some of the comments and what I saw was a lot of foolish and clueless suggestions, such as asking the guy to try to talk to the spirit and asking it to leave the house. Other comments are those typical skeptical comments, saying this has been exposed to be fake and so on. To be honest, I'm not really interested whether the video I shared earlier is fake because demonic infestation does happen. So with that in mind, I'd like to share what an exorcist has to say about this matter and I know I've covered demonic infestation in previous videos, but I'd still like to cover this subject again. So that when there are people out there who feel helpless and exhausted by the continuous attacks of the demonic at home, this video can provide them with a solution. Um, but then there can be other sorts of things such as obsessions or oppressions, all right, where demons will actually attack a person, you know, mentally, physically, sometimes, uh, spiritually. There are, there are demonic attacks that occur, all right? And then you have these um, infestations where you have demons will be in a place, okay? Um, a haunted house, for example. Um, haunted houses, it's an interesting phenomenon. Um, they could either be lost souls from purgatory or they could be demons, right? So part of the, the a question is, how do you determine which is which? And there are some ways, all right? There are some ways to do it. For example, demons will engage in all kinds of conversations. If a person sees um, a spirit, a figure, whatever, <clears throat> you can look at the figure. If it's a full-bodied figure that doesn't really say anything, it's probably a lost soul. Right? But if you see a partial figure or a shadow or something like that, and they're talking and saying all kinds of things to you, then that's a demon. Right? So there are different ways in which you can discern these things. Um, they, 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 they can't take the fullness, fullness of human form right? um, because they're not human. All right. So uh, that's part of the issue. So what you have to do then is, I just actually had someone stop me a little bit ago um, and ask me specifically about that question about a house that is supposedly haunted. <clears throat> what should the parish priest do? And I said, the first thing you do is you, you, know, you look at the history. Did anything happen in that house? Was there a suicide, a murder, some kind of trauma that occurred there in the past? Something that happened there, um, that gives you a clue then there might have been, that might have been a portal that opened it up to the demonic, all right? But the first thing the priest should do is come and bless the house. No mm -hmm. question about that. In fact, our houses should be blessed on a regular basis, once a year at least. Anyway, so, um, and if you do that, if the priest will come in and bless the house, then, and, and it doesn't help, all right? And then another thing that can be done after that is you have a mass said 
for a deceased soul. All right, and if that doesn't help, all right, and it's still there, and then the next thing would be to actually bring the exorcist in and do what we call a minor exorcism of the house, um, which is sometimes referred to in the old uh, ritual as the chapter three. It's the um, the minor exorcism over places, um, so that can be done. So there are, there are various levels in which these kinds of things occur. It's interesting that Father Sada mentioned this in the audio clip. Demons love electronics. Speak boxes are devices that are apparently something like a, a cell phone, but you don't call a number or anything like that. It's not like it's some kind of a gimmick, um, but it's supposedly wired in such a way in certain frequencies. And demons love that electronics, by the way. They oh. play all kinds of games with electronics. Um, so, but anyway, it was supposedly enables a person to speak with the dead. All right, so sometimes people get depressed, discouraged. Where's my husband? Where's my son? Where's my, you know, whatever? Uh, are they okay? Are they at peace? Blah, blah, blah. And so they get one of these devices and they contact the dead and have a conversation with them and don't even realize the fact that they were actually talking to a demon because God does not allow the souls of the deceased to engage in conversations with the living. So, you know, those are portals. Well, and I've had three cases now of individuals who have used speak boxes, and in every single case, they, they experienced attack afterwards. Monsignor Rossetti said pretty much the same thing. In one particular article on this very subject written by him, Monsignor Rossetti said, every time we run one of our monthly online deliverance sessions, we have interference with our communications. The computer will shut down one minute before it was to begin. Another time, in the middle of a session without my even touching my computer, it went ballistic. Other times, we have problems connecting to YouTube. Recently, the registration page crashed and people could not register. It's all a little bizarre, but we are very familiar with demonic interference in electronic communications. Those afflicted with demons regularly have difficulty connecting with our exorcists. In the meantime, we get taunting texts and messages from demons claiming responsibility. So let's do that now. Let's pray with me. I'm going to do the uh, renew the baptismal promises, which is fundamentally saying, I belong to Jesus. So do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Let's say a little more energy. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do, in all his empty promises, I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who born the Virgin Mary, suffered, died, rose from the dead, now sits at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body and life everlasting? I do. I claim you for Christ, our Savior, by the sign of his cross. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you and I belong to Jesus. Well, hopefully this video will be helpful to those who are experiencing demonic attacks at home. And I do know that it can be an exhausting experience and makes them feel helpless if they do not know who to turn to in those times. I mean, how can it not be when the moment you're trying to sleep, the light goes on and off, sounds of people running in the hallway, and whatever else these demons are up to, day or night. For the last part of this video, I'd like to share with you an example of a paranormal investigator who's been haunted ever since he's been supposedly investigating places that are said to be haunted and he can't help the feeling that something is following him from hearing strange noises at night to having an episode of sleep paralysis during which he'd seen what would appear to be a lady with long black hair. I'm not showing this to make you afraid. I'm just driving home the point that exorcists often warned us about in my previous videos. What's wrong? Something there? Why are you following me? 
Who are you? Anyway, that's all for this time, and thanks so much for taking the time to be here with us. And for those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below, and I would like to say thank you so much to all of you who have contributed previously. We can only thank you by delivering more useful videos like this in the future. Until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.